This is uh, the December 16, 2011 uh, public hearing and uh, meeting. I guess I want to stay, say at the outset that I noticed that there are a number of people here uh, in the courtroom that have cameras, and that's fine. Um, you're entitled to, this is a public meeting, you're entitled to take uh, photographs or, or record. Without further ado, um, the first items, and I'm going to take them, uh, although there are four subsets, I'm going to take them um, uh, together because they all really deal with the same issue. Um, it deals with um, Superior Court Rule 78 uh, regarding photographing, recording, or broadcasting um, uh, in uh, proceedings that take place in the courtroom. The first person who was uh, who had signed up to speak was uh, Mr. Connell. Sure, my name is John Connell. Uh, I'm a Grafton resident. I'm pastor at Peaceful Assembly Church, which is organized in Grafton, New Hampshire. Uh, I wanted to speak generally about recording in the courtrooms. Uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about uh, you know when we grew up and went to school, how we were taught about all around the planet there were evil governments that were so evil that people needed to go over there and bomb them and kill them and break their stuff. And with that I started to think about well what is it that made them evil governments? And there are a, a list of things we were told about not having the right to private property, not having a business without permission, endlessly regulated, these sorts of things, torturing their prisoners in endless wars around the planet. And another thing that relates to today, there was a lot of secrecy in those governments and there was a lot of fear and intimidation. We witnessed a little bit of intimidation out here by one guy today, and my concern is what are we handing down to our children and our grandchildren, and if there's anything left for those who follow that. Please give it some serious thought about what in the world is going on. Some of the bills that we see coming out of the, the, the federal government, like a, uh, a thing where they're gonna be able to detain US citizens without charge and without trial, this is the stuff we heard about going on in those evil countries. What does it say about the type of government that's being created here? Matt Vincent, who also indicated that he wanted to uh, speak generally. Mr. I think uh, Mr. Connell said everything that I wanted to say. All right. So I uh, declined to speak. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to uh, speak uh, specifically about my case. Um, I was actually assaulted in the Cheshire County Superior Court because I had a camera in the court lobby the size of my thumb. Uh, two bailiffs decided that uh, they would uh, handcuff me and then uh, I was dragged by those handcuffs across the room into an elevator um, where I was taken downstairs where the sheriff department is located and then I was kept in a holding cell for seven hours. Uh, it was at the end of the day that I was taken to the corrections facility in Cheshire County where I spent an additional three days. I would like transparency. Uh, I actually covered the Supreme Court when you were on the road, and I think it was you that mentioned that the judicial branch is one of the least understood branches of government. Well, there's plenty of people with cameras that would like to make uh, the judicial process much more transparent, but uh, it's a dangerous activity. I mean, people have been arrested. Um, and myself caged, and I don't, I don't like going back to that superior court uh, any any longer because I feel like I'm in danger, and I would like for that, that fear to go away. So, <coughs> what happened with my friend Jason is the AOC and Chief Judge uh, Tina Nato issued an order directly in response to my other friend uh, Adam, who was uh, who caught the presiding justice of the Keene District Court on camera committing the crime of false reports to law enforcement. In 11 years, I applied for hundreds of arrest warrants, and I'll tell you right now that what he caught on camera is a Class A misdemeanor. And as a result of that, I believe there's judicial corruption because not only is the judge in the Keene District Court still sitting on the bench, but the AOC issues an order saying that you can't possess a camera in the building. And I find it very objectionable that, um, that the court would continue to restrict things in this manner, um, specifically when it looks like it's, it's being done to protect a judge. We have to sort of balance things and trying to figure out where people see that balance being realized. I guess I don't understand because um, if I wanted to, and I don't, if I wanted to go and record children in court, I could just stand outside. And so the question would be, 
how far beyond the courtroom then will this radius of uh, protecting the children from being photographed in public uh, expand? I think that should point to the absurdity of the suggestion in the first place that you know they should there should be any you know, level of protection for anyone that comes to court. Uh, witnesses coming to court, obviously, it's a hard thing for them to do. Uh, but part of being a witness in America is that you can't be concealed. You know, your identity can't be concealed. There's a, a major chilling effect that uh, has come from all of these orders banning cameras just from the whole courthouse. I realize you want to focus on just the inside of the courtroom thing, but the fact that there is even a ban for the, the whole courthouse is a, is a chilling effect on free speech that makes it less likely, as Jason Talley commented, for him to even want to come to the courthouse. I mean, I'm more than willing to set up in whatever location they think is appropriate. I've got the equipment that's necessary to make that possible. So I have no problem with that. But what I do have a problem with as far as the inside the courtroom uh, situation is the unending hoops that the courts seem to want to put up uh, to make the media jump through. And, uh, you know, New Hampshire Constitution is pretty clear in Article 22 that the right to free press uh, you know, should be involubly, involubly preserved. I believe is what it says, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, if it's a right, then you don't have to ask permission. I'm sure you're all aware that the order that uh, Ms. Nadeau and uh, Mr. Kelly, I believe, put out for the, the district and superior courts at one time required 48 hours notice. Again, just arbitrarily putting up hoops. The court workers are, I guess they're not proud of what they're doing because they don't really seemed to like cameras in there. And so when more cameras started showing up, all of a sudden rules began to be created. And I've been there when members of uh, the press, my colleagues, have been arrested. You know, all of these arrests are happening in the Keene District Court lobby or the Cheshire Superior Court lobby. And uh, it's a really chilling free speech thing where people are afraid to come into these courthouses. And it also makes it so you can't hold anyone accountable. I can't. We, we sure, sure, but um, yeah, everything's already been said that I could say. All right, so. All right. well, thank you, Mr. Um, I have been arrested for filming uh, in courts. Um, to me, it's not an issue about in court, out of court. It's one of the same. These are public officials uh, acting in the course of their public duties that is given to them by the public, and they share no expectation of privacy. I know. To me, it's not about what rules need to be made, but how many rules we need to get rid of. As long as this is a public building, as long as the folks that are filming are interested in filming open public court hearings, they should be allowed to do so. End of story. Thank you. Question. The objectives you guys are here to um, pursue, I would say, is for justice and, and protection of rights and things. I would say the best way to go about them is not through a one-size-fits-all monopoly, which currently exists. I think a monopoly shelter for market signals, whether it's in law or any, any other thing the state today claims a monopoly on is either moral or efficient. So uh, we should trust that people will act uh, appropriately and if they don't then they should be held accountable for their actions. But the default should be people should be free to come in. It's a public space. It's paid for by money that, that's taken from other folks. So um, I'm an attorney at Orrin Reno in Concord. Um, in that role, our firm and I represent a number of media organizations, including WMUR, the Concord Monitor, Team Sentinel, and the Valley News. We've come a long way because the WMUR case was decided in 2002, and that, that was the case that really formed the basis for Rule 78. So up until that time, there had been some uh, decisions, and certainly decisions that we had based our arguments on in the WMUR case in terms of a constitutional or common law right of access to the courtroom. Proposed rule, uh, there are a number of changes. I can answer specific questions about them. But in general, it's fair to say that the rule uh, implements the strong presumption in favor of access. The first portion of the rule um, has been significantly uh, rewritten, again, in every instance to make access easier to make the procedures less burdensome and to make it possible for uh, uh, people and uh, citizens with cameras to get into the courtroom. I think the proposed amendments are excellent. The amendments that you're, that you're considering uh, recommending to the Supreme Court will bring the court's media rules more into line with case law. In the rules as they currently exist, the presumption of access is that no one will record unless they can, they can demonstrate that, um, that they should be allowed to do so. 
under the new rules, the presumption is that people will be allowed to record. The new rules also take away the distinction that the old rules had between media and non-media. But I, I would suggest that using uh, a solid metric like circulation would be a much more objective way of resolving who's admitted than using the, the fuzzier criteria of who is established and who's not. When, news, when members of the citizen media are arrested in Keene for using cameras in court, this does not look good for the judiciary. Of course, the Dillboy case didn't help the courts either. Then, in June of this year, a man burned himself to death on the front steps of the Cheshire Superior Courthouse to bring public attention to the waning legitimacy of the New Hampshire courts. When a judge makes a corrupt or illegal ruling, that judge needs to know that it could be on 5 o'clock news or broadcast on YouTube for the entire world to see. Someone said that, that the, the court system is one of the least understood branches of government. And I have to admit that I was kind of in that category up to about, say, four or five years ago. I'd never really been exposed to the court system, but then because of you know, economic issues and so forth, I've been exposed to the court system quite a bit lately. Uh, and I can tell you that I'm not very happy with what I've seen. Um, the word corruption was mentioned earlier. I think that's what I've seen. Um, I don't think that the system works fairly. I think that the and, and I think that the judges and the lawyers have a lot to do with that. But um, so I, I definitely do think that that there needs to be transparency. You need to let people on the outside know more about what's going on and, and be able to actually see it. The public needs easy, uh, an easy way to be able to look at what goes on in here so that the necessary outrage will begin to swell up and that the people will begin to uh, take the, whatever means necessary to feasibly change the system and improve it to make it work the way it's supposed to, which is to be a system that affords justice to people, uh, not where people just go in there and feel like they're being bullied and run over which is what I've seen as an experience. And um, I'm not trying to threaten anything, but I, I read a story a few months ago that, that stuck in my mind about things that happened back in the Depression, and apparently there were cases where there were mobs of citizens going into courtrooms, into courthouses, and taking the judges outside and threatening to hang them if they didn't mitigate their behavior. That's not the way we want to wind up, okay? I would say that it's better to let citizens come in, peaceably come into courtrooms with cameras to take pictures of what's going on so that we can correct the system that way than it is to have citizens coming in through the windows in mobs with ropes and correcting the system, system that way. I just want to go over the current and existing case law that actually goes back a lot farther than the WMUR case. Um, there's no specific right to a public trial in the New Hampshire Constitution but that right is now recognized as existing under both Article 15 and the 6th and 14th Amendments of the United States Constitutions. There is also the issue of open judicial proceedings, which has been decided in the context of preliminary hearings involving access of the press. Interestingly enough, these were all in Cheshire County. Keene Publishing Court versus Keene District Court it was decided in 1977. We've been having these problems in Cheshire County since 77. How can the court justify rules which blanketly close courtrooms and court lobbies for open recording? Courts, as I've said, have conferred these um, closures to, to the lobby areas and are arresting peaceful people for trying to record. It's not right. The rule goes against these years and years of current case law and is contrary to our Constitution. In June of this year, I was handing out some literature outside of a courtroom <coughs> when I heard that a friend of mine had been arrested upstairs uh, in Keene District Court for asking a judge a few questions. Believing this to be illegal, I went upstairs with one of my personal cameras to get an objective record. I was uh, arrested when I entered the lobby of the courtroom by a bailiff who told me that filming was against the law. Uh, I asked him to state the law, uh, give me some sort of clarification on that, uh, but within six seconds of that warning, I was arrested. I believe that cameras keep an objective record of 
what is happening, and I believe I was arrested to keep that objective record from showing that my friend had been wrongfully arrested by the court. In the interest of justice, I ask that you allow cameras to keep that objective record. I'm the uh, Rockingham County Court uh, Correspondent for uh, the Union Leader, and uh, I'm also uh, the co-chairman uh, on the Committee on U Judiciary and the Media. It's a seat that I've shared uh, for the last year and a half with uh, Justice Duggan. Um, I'm also a board member of the New Hampshire Press Association. In an ideal world, the uh, Press Association has come from the standpoint of there should be no Rule 78, and that's basically on the premise of uh, New Hampshire's Constitution and, and certainly the, the NUR decision that, that Jim referenced, uh, you know, uh, recognizes that courts are presumptively open. Uh, the, the state is often one of the agents in the court. The prosecutor is, 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 is pr prosecuting a citizen for some alleged crime. The state has got many more resources, and I think every citizen that comes into a courtroom or any kind of a hearing where some decision is going to be made about his life or her life, that's critical. That that individual should always have the right to record. Um, is there any provision for these rules to actually have punishment for government agents that interfere with the rights? Of, of people to record, or but, would that be legislation that would have to occur to? Well, for example, I think that, that a violation of the rule, just like a violation of any court rule, if it was done willfully, I mean, could, could potentially subject the person to a contempt of court citation. Sure, Representative Seth Cole, representing uh, Merrimack 6, the towns of Andover, Boscoe, Canterbury, Salisbury, Loudoun, and Northfield. Um, I'm concerned today. I'm concerned because Article 8 guarantees the public's right of access to government proceedings and records and that they shall not be unreasonably restricted. Instead of being reasonable, I'm watching as we are losing a fundamental right. Every one of these individuals, if they chose to record this process, should be allowed to. And instead, walking into this room, we were told that if there were more people than seats here, the person sitting on that side of the room would not be allowed to record. That is not right, and that needs to be considered very strongly. This is a fundamental constitutional right for open access. Reasonable is not whatever we come up with balancing the different things. It should be whatever the minimum is to protect that right and no more. Thank you. I would just like to ask that when the committee considers the rules as it um, regards to uh, recording in the lobby or cameras in the lobby that they also consider how it relates to 91A because um, right now these electronic devices are used as a convenient and quick way um, to get copies of public records and people in, in some courts are being prevented from even entering the courtroom with a camera or a video recording device even after telling them that my purpose of having this is to view public documents and to use this to record them um, instead of Photocopying them, it's already an electron. Is uh, light is the best disinfectant, and I just hope you uh, choose choose on the side of uh, transparency. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn then to um, item one uh, B on the agenda, which uh, deals with. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Can you Please move now. Stop blocking. Why are you getting in her face?